it's time to really dig deep into what your crochet business needs to become a profit-making machine. Hooked on Success dives deep into all the ways your crochet can make money, how to market and grow your audience, and then how to stitch all the elements together to create your ideal business. Join us now at crochetbusinessschool.com forward slash success. Welcome to the Crochet Business School podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Thomas, and I'm going to help you to make your crochet business dreams a reality, stitch by stitch, without you being chained to your hook and being able to live that lifestyle you've been dreaming of using the power of your crochet. The way that you can use your crochet to bring in an income is through sponsorship. So but I think we're all familiar with the idea of pattern writers being sponsored by yarn brands. And that's a great way to um, increase your visibility and get access to the brand's audience. The sponsorship works both ways. It has to benefit both you and the brand that's sponsoring you. But it's not exclusive to pattern designers. You can get sponsored by anyone for anything. Oftentimes, you have to go and make the approach. So if you want to be sponsored by a brand or want to showcase one of their products and have them pay you for that, you have to go and approach them. There's all kinds of ways that you can gain sponsorship in your crochet business. Yarn Brands is probably the most well known, but you can also get sponsors through uh, blog posts, social media posts, videos. You can do social media takeovers where you allow brands to take over your social media for the day. You get sponsored by allowing them to place ads in your content. Merchandise reviews are a very popular way of doing this. So if you're saying what you make, you can team up with a brand that suits your products. So if you um, sell nursery themed things, you can team up with a baby brand, maybe someone who designs nursery furniture or baby products, something that would fit well with what you offer. Selling what you make, you could team up with someone who sells a gentle detergent to help clean your crochet because you now many people who buy crochet have no idea how to take care of it. It will be useful to your readers to know. Sponsorship is, it can be a big thing. It can be a small thing. It doesn't have to be the overarching theme of your business. It doesn't have to seep into everything you do, it can be a short-term uh, collaboration. If they sponsor a blog post, you work with them for that single blog post and you both work out what it is that you want to offer. You work out the terms. You decide whether the collaboration that is being offered suits you. I mean, you don't have to accept it. Just, I mean, it's very flattering when you are approached to do um, reviews on things. Um, I've been approached by um, independent yarn sellers. I've been approached by people who want me to review their blocking boards. I didn't take them up on it at the time. The yarn brand was an independent seller in the US and I'm in the UK. It didn't seem feasible at the time. The company with the blocking boards at the time, my blog wasn't very well established. I didn't think it would be a good fit just because I wasn't writing that kind of content at the time. But it's very flattering to get approached. And I think sometimes it's easy to accept the deal because it's so exciting that someone's offered you this. And we don't necessarily look at the small print. But these things have to be mutually beneficial. They have to work both ways. You can get long-term sponsorship deals, like with the yarn brands and the pattern designers. They tend to be quite long-term and they come in different forms. They can be, if paid 
collaboration. So if you publish that blog post, you will get paid to write it. Yarn brand collaborations can be, if you um, use my yarn, I'll give you a discount on it. So your yarn costs go down. And often you'll have to track how many sales you're getting from the content you're creating. So sponsorship can be discount of products you're going to use anyway, like the yarn. They can be paid in cash for creating content and anything else in between. You can enter collaborations and sponsorship if you're selling what you make, if you're pack designing, if you're course creating, if you're writing blog posts, if you're making videos. There is a sponsorship idea for every business type. Now, while occasionally you can get approached by brands to um, review their products, most of the time you do have to go and approach these brands yourself. If you can think of oh, a brand that will really suit your crochet, go and ask them. And it is just reaching out and sending them an email saying how you think that this teaming up could work for both of you, what you would get out of it, what they what you would get out of it, and it's a negotiation. And it is scary to go reaching out and sending those emails, um, but the worst they can do is say no. So what do you say to these brands when you reach out? Well, they're going to want to know what you can offer them. They're going to want to know the size of your audience, what kind of collaboration you're thinking of, how long you want it to run, what kind of uh, content you'll be creating, if you're going to be doing reviews, if it's going to be on your social media, through your newsletter, are you going to create videos? What can you offer them? I mean, that's what they're really interested in for them. They want to know the bottom line. They will come back and they will, you know, take a look at your social media. They will take a look at your internet presence. They will take a look at how your audience fits them. And if they're interested, they'll come back and say so. If they're not interested, maybe you'll just hear radio silence. Who knows? But the worst that can happen is that they come back and say no, or you never hear from them again. And of course, once you make that deal, you've got to make sure it fits you. Just because they said, yes, let's work together, here's the deal we're offering, doesn't mean you have to accept it. This does have to work both ways. If it's not going to benefit you, what's the point? You know, everyone has their own interests at the top of their priority. And so you do have to negotiate what you think is acceptable. How much do you want to be paid for allowing another brand to take over your social media for the day? How much do you want to be paid for spending those hours writing that blog post? If you're going to be doing a review on a product, what do you want to get out of that? Is commission from affiliate sales enough? And as well as keeping the product that you'll be asked to review? Or do you want to get paid on top of that as well? You do have some power in dictating these terms. And it's really up to you about what's that worth to you and your business. Just because you approached a company that might have um, a bigger audience, um, me, but be more established than you are. It doesn't mean that you have to settle for small terms. It doesn't mean you have to settle for a small payday. Sponsorship does require you to kind of pull up your boots and really go for it. I've played with this idea a few times and I've never gone ahead and done it because... To be honest, approaching those companies scares the hell out of me. But I also don't think at this point it's the best fit for me. But that's me. How you do things is up to you. How you want to run your business is up to you. And if 
sponsorship and collaborating with other brands is how you want to move your crochet business forward and bring that extra revenue in, then go for it. Make a list of all the products and brands that would fit well with your niche and what you have to offer. Find out who is head of their marketing department and start sending emails. Tell them what you can offer them. Tell them what your terms are and start that negotiation. Sponsorship can be a really great additional profit stream for you, but you do have to have some sort of established audience before you can go for it. Sponsorship is not really something a brand new crochet business can really do. You've got to have some content available to show them what you do. You need an audience. You need to find niche. You need to have been around for a little bit before starting down the sponsorship route. But there's no reason why that if you are new, you cannot start thinking about this for the future and put this into your future plans. For just pattern designers, sponsorship can feel like the big goal. And for sure, it can have massive benefits to your um, pattern designing business. It brings massive exposure. They can bring to bear a lot of resources to help you and massively grow your pattern design business. That doesn't mean that it doesn't come without its drawbacks. Of course, there must be something in it for the yarn company as well. And you have to decide whether those terms that are offered are worth that exposure, are worth the price that comes with that. Sponsorship is not for everyone, but it can also be a way of rapidly growing your crochet business and bringing in a brand new audience through collaboration with brands that fit with your crochet. Thank you for joining me for this episode of the Crochet Business School podcast. Stay tuned for more episodes and please subscribe to wherever you listen to your podcast. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Crochet Business School. Subscribe to the channels because I would love to hear from you and what you're up to in your own crochet business. If you have any questions about creating and growing your own crochet business, please send them my way and I'll answer them in future episodes. So thank you for joining me and I shall see you in the next episode. Bye for now.